Open access has become one of the most important issues for researchers and scholars across the world. But navigating opportunities to communicate research quickly and effectively without prohibitive costs and other barriers remains an ongoing challenge. Staff from James Cook University Library and Information Services spoke to some of JCU's leading experts in open access to discuss the nature and benefits of open access publishing and the future of open knowledge. For me, open access is the concept of ensuring that the research that you do is published in a way that all who need to use it can access it. So the great advantage of that is that more people can see it. It doesn't matter what country they come from. It doesn't matter whether they've got a subscription to that journal. They can see your work. What I love about open access is that it makes the research that I do with people trying to make change happen accessible to those people, um, even if they're outside of academia. I suppose it comes back to profit motive. You know, by and large, um, people in the academy traditionally have not been um, uh, working for profit. Certainly universities have been around for a long time and they've, uh, they've developed a certain way of doing things, peer-reviewed literature and so forth. I don't think open access really changes anything from that perspective, provided it's a proper peer-reviewed journal. I think actually it's quite an expensive route to take and that is actually the major barrier to open access publishing. Our scientific publishing model is entirely wrapped up in a for-profit system and so I don't think that you can separate out, separate out a culture that links uh, scientific rigour and academic progression, which is what individuals who are working in, in universities require for their own professional security, to a publishing model that is entirely driven by profit. So there are only a handful of large publishing companies who make profit margins that Google and Apple would be jealous of and they do it off the back of largely publicly, publicly funded research, free peer review, and free editorial assistance. Now, we find ourselves now, unfortunately, because we've incrementally slept walk into the case where a few very large and only a few commercial publishers dominate research publishing. And those journals have prestige and impact factor and the whole thing rolls on. And they're profiting it to the tune of billions of US dollars per annum. That makes great commercial sense, but it doesn't make good scholarly sense. So unpicking that, unthreading that, is, is going to be by necessity slow. Uh, I think it'll take bravery by the best researchers to start publishing in other locations. And I don't know why we wouldn't be brave about that um, in universities. Professors largely have tenure, and I think people need to exercise tenure. And by that I mean it, has, it comes with responsibilities to do the right thing. And I think in this case, doing the right thing is now embracing more forms of open access. Yeah, so the biggest cultural barriers are that academics ourselves need to unlearn the the kind of elitism that we have around what makes a journal a good journal. Um, and a lot of the purely open access journals, the ones that you don't have to pay a lot of money to get into, aren't considered the very best outputs. But uh, in terms of equity and justice, they are really good because people can, can get at the information that you publish there. So I think it's about um, finding a balance and, and sort of narrating your career in such a way that you're justifying why you're choosing the open access outputs over some of the very best um, research journals um, because of what you're trying to accomplish with your research. When I have discussions with people around where is open access and open data going, most of us believe that that is our new norm. Uh, and most of the granting agencies that I apply for funding for uh, are 
almost demanding that. They all see this, particularly as they are either co-designing or co-financing that development of knowledge or that synthesis of knowledge. They see that as being a, a common good uh, and they also see that they are part of the development of that intellectual property. Uh, I don't see that we're going to move backwards from open access. I would say that the future for open access is a positive one, but people interested in open access need to be vigilant about ensuring that they spread the word and they practice open access. Australia's academic um, libraries are spending vast fortunes to buy our own work back. We don't have enough money for research, we'd all accept that. Why are we giving it away to giant multinationals so that we can look at our own work? And we don't get any discount for things which uh, our academics have paid to publish gold open access either. Exactly. Yeah. So it's almost a sovereignty issue. It's academic sovereignty and we've got to reclaim it. I think we're feeling uncertain about open access and open access data. Uh, a couple of things I'd suggest to them. I mean, one is talk to librarians, uh, talk to researchers who are actually involved in open access and talk to them about the concerns that you have. They can help you walk through what to do about it. They can help you walk through how to um, design your tools and your data collection and the management of that data in a way that's going to address some of your concerns but allow it to be open access. I think the second thing is look at what the metrics now show. We know that if you do open access publishing, you're more likely to be cited and more higher citations, which is still a metric that many researchers want to and need to for promotion. Uh, pay attention to, uh, but also it allows it to be those other aspects of impact that now our research is being measured on, the impact of its translation in the medium or longer term into policy and practice. And open access public publications can actually help achieve all of those metrics far more easily than if you actually stuck to, stuck to the more traditional way of public publishing and keeping the data to yourself.